Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. Last episode, we talked about what would happen to the Earth if one day the Death Star appeared over our planet. The results were bad, like Alderaan bad. But while doing research for that video, I ran into some interesting articles which described some real life existential threats that we might face in the near future. I decided to compile this list because I realized that most of these dangers are unstoppable and our technology is not good enough to save us from extinction. I think it's imperative to remind ourselves just how fragile this planet is. Over 500 humans have gone into space since humanity started launching rockets into the heavens. The majority of these astronauts reported having what's known as an overview effect. Despite being prepared to see Earth from space, despite understanding what it will look like from an academic point of view, most people are unprepared to see our planet from space. Many astronauts reported weeping upon seeing the sheer beauty of our planet and being overwhelmed by how vulnerable it looked. Just imagine seeing a glowing blue orb full of life being held together by a few thin layers of atmosphere. The thought of that is terrifying. When these people come back from their trips into space, their worldview often changes. This is the overview effect. They begin seeing humanity as a whole, not a fractured planet full of different nations, ideologies, and religions. Perhaps like a Monet painting, it's easier to understand humanity from afar. Imagine if instead of fighting each other, we spent all of our energy in a united front to explore the galaxy. Imagine instead of designing weapons to kill other human beings, we designed them to beat weaker alien races into submission. Imagine instead of fighting for the limited resources on Earth, we could just strip mine planets and leave them as barren and toxic as we want, without consequence. Now that's a future I'm willing to fight for. But first, we have to figure out how to get off this damn rock. And in order to inspire you guys, here are four unstoppable events that will more or less happen to our planet sooner or later. Binary star systems are a beautiful thing. And there's one about 8,000 light years away from us called WR104. Both of the stars in the system are at the end of their long lifespan and on the verge of exploding. One of them, known as Wolf Rayet, is at the very end of its lifespan and completely unstable. Scientists predict it will supernova any time in the next few hundred thousand years. Because of how the stars are angled, when the explosion occurs, it's likely an intense beam of gamma ray will shoot directly through our system. Best case scenario doesn't happen for a few hundred thousand years, and by then humanity will have spread across the galaxy and dominated other weaker alien species, and it'll just be a regional threat to one of our older planets. Also, the scientists who discovered this admitted that their calculations aren't 100% accurate, so it's very possible that these gamma rays will miss the Earth completely. Worst case scenario, the gamma ray does hit our planet. If that ray does hit our planet, we'll see a depletion in our ozone layer by 25%. The gamma ray would also heat up toxins and gases in our atmosphere, creating smog that would block out our sun and create acid rain. The entire world will basically look like Beijing on an average day, and Beijing will look like Venus. These two events would cause an agricultural crisis and possibly lead to food shortages and famines. There would also be an increase in radiation exposure and sickness on the side of the planet that gets hit. The sun won't die for another 5 billion years, but in reality, we have a lot less time to live on this planet. Right now, our sun is a main sequence star, and it's in its most stable period. But as the star begins to age, it will turn into a red giant and begin to expand. Eventually, it will reach the orbit of Mars and probably drag the Earth into its surface. How fast will that happen? Well, scientists estimate that every billion years, there will be a 10% increase in the brightness of the sun. That might not sound like much, but for us Earthlings, it will be extremely bad. Such an increase would move Earth out of the sun's Goldilocks zone. Basically, it would start getting really hot, and then the oceans would evaporate into the atmosphere, which would cause a thicker atmosphere, and increase the greenhouse effect, which would make it even hotter, and then basically one day, Earth will turn into Venus. Best case scenario, scientists are wrong and we have slightly more time, maybe a billion years, who knows? But in all honesty, by that time, Earth will probably have been destroyed by something else and humanity would have left a long time ago. Worst case event, this scenario happens much sooner. It's hard to predict exactly how soon, but it's generally accepted that Earth will be uninhabitable within one billion years. 
our ability to detect asteroids which are on a collision course with Earth is steadily growing, as is our ability to deflect these asteroids. Well, at least theoretically, but you might be surprised by just how many holes are in our surveillance of these near-Earth objects. NASA estimates that there are over 25,000 NEOs. Around half of these asteroids are over 100 meters in length. And the scary thing is we've only identified around a quarter of the asteroids which are over 100 meters in length. This leaves 75% of the NEOs that are out there undiscovered. The next potential threat to Earth is the asteroid known as 2009 FD. The good thing is that it won't intercept Earth for another 100 years. And even then, there's only a 0.2% chance that it'll actually collide with the Earth. The asteroid will be close to 500 meters long and traveling at 30,000 miles per hour. And Czech astronomers have said that there might be an increase in asteroid sightings in the near future. This was after they studied the fragments of the Torrid meteor shower. Believe it or not, the Torrid is believed to just be a small fragment of a much larger formation of rock. The researchers have claimed to have found this new formation of rock and have found at least a few 100 meter plus asteroids so far. In the best case scenario, we discover the asteroid very early on, like FD 2009, and formulate some kind of plan to divert the asteroid from a collision course with Earth. Contrary to popular belief, we once send up Bruce Willis and a team of oil rig workers to blow up the asteroid. Even if we manage to destroy the asteroid, there will still be many large pieces which could potentially crash into the Earth. The best course of action would be to alter the speed of the asteroid so that it will miss the Earth completely. Although we probably should keep Liv Tyler. She'd be a great inspiration to all of us. NASA's Asteroid Redirect mission is planning on sending a robot into space, which will redirect an asteroid into the moon's orbit, where it can undergo more studies in the future. Worst case scenario, we don't detect the asteroid until the last minute. Earlier this year, an asteroid passed within 30,000 miles of our planet. The scary thing is we didn't detect it until it was seven hours away from Earth. Luckily, it was only six meters long and no real threat to the planet. Let's say something crazy happens and a one mile long asteroid slips through our surveillance somehow and we only find out about it within three months of impact. Would our planet be ready? The asteroid redirect mission I was talking about before is constantly being defunded and delayed and won't happen for another decade. It's very possible we won't have the right vehicles and tools to deliver Earth from salvation. We'll probably just have to wing it and hope for the best. Asteroids are extremely dangerous, but there's something equally as dangerous beneath our feet, and it's much more likely to happen. In 1815, Mount Tambora in the Dutch East Indies erupted. On the Volcanic Explosivity Index, it was a 7 out of 8. This isn't like a hurricane scale where the maximum Category 5 storm is commonplace. A Category 7 eruption happens maybe once every thousand years. The resulting eruption immediately killed 10,000 people in the surrounding area, and it was heard as far as 2,600 kilometers away, and ash fell as far as 1,300 meters away. For two days, within 600 kilometers of the volcano, the sky was pitch black. It was essentially Mordor. But that wasn't all. The volcano's plume was 45 kilometers high. That's about four times higher than your average jetliner can fly. Because of the insane amount of sulfur dioxide being pumped into the atmosphere, that year would go on to be known as the year without summer. On average, global temperatures dropped by 0.4 to 0.7 Celsius. That might not seem like a lot, but snow was reported in June in New York. Frost and other weird weather phenomena would plague the northern hemisphere and entire crops would fail, causing famine and disease. Now in the best case scenario, gigantic supervolcanoes like the one at Yellowstone National Park has a minor eruption that will only cause some regional damage. In the worst case scenario, Yellowstone Park has what's known as a magnitude 8 volcanic eruption. This has happened three times at Yellowstone in the last 2 million years. The last time was 640,000 years ago. Everyone in the immediate area would die and much of the country would be covered in ash. There would be intense climate change due to all the sulfur dioxide and ash pumped into the atmosphere and worldwide the temperature would drop for at least a decade. Most of our country's agriculture would be destroyed and there will be massive migration out of the affected areas. This would destroy the US economy and cause the greatest financial crisis the world has ever seen. These are just four of the dangers I decided to mention today. I didn't even go on to mention overpopulation, climate change, alien invasion, solar activity, the core of the earth stops spinning, zombies, vampires, zombie vampires, robots, Nazis from the dark side of the moon, lizard men from the center of the earth. Now I'm not doing all this to cause panic. Well, 
maybe I'm trying to cause a little bit of panic, but the main reason I'm doing this is because I think our planet really needs to get its act together. Oh, holy. We spend so much of our energy here on Earth fighting each other. Democrats and Republicans, Star Wars fans and Star Trek fans, China versus America versus Russia, North Korea, well, you know what, F North Korea. Did you know the world spends over $1.6 trillion a year on military expenses? Imagine if all that money went into scientific research. We probably would have colonized half the solar system by now. Imagine how sad it is for a man like Buzz Aldrin to see man go to the moon in the 1960s. Yet half a century later, we've all but lost that ability. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed our little foray outside of the Star Wars galaxy. Every now and then when the opportunity presents itself, we do like to do things a little bit differently. Special thanks to all you Patreon supporters out there. You choose to support our channel and the other things, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. I salute you. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.